And I said, I'll do anything you want. Huh? Any stunt, anything. I don't care. I'll do it. Drag me, punch me, whatever. I don't care. I'll do it. And I loved it so much. I became like uh, that guy. I kind of really yeah. want to start at the beginning, though, because you mentioned yeah. you went to, out to L.A. to pursue acting. Yeah. So, was there like a specific movie or a star where you're that you were yeah. inspired by? Say, I want to be kind of like this and do this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. As a, I think, as I said, Van Damme, myself, every single person that ended up in L.A. like a gunslinger, you know, we, we all were like ready to go for it. We, You had to have some. I had to have a motivation, you know. Oh, yeah. I think uh, with uh, Van Damme, he said it was Hong Kong movies, and you know, he he idolized uh, the Hong Kong fighters, Bruce Lee, and everybody, right? So mm -hmm. for me, it was never martial arts. It, it was a totally different thing. Um, I I'm a track and field athlete, right? But I did judo and taekwondo, but it wasn't my calling. You know, everybody has a calling uh, because I'm six five. So I, I was really good in track and, and uh, you know, I trained six days a week, the competitions all around Europe, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I had the foundation of martial arts, but that's never occurred to me. I'm going to go to Hollywood, be a martial art fighter. What happened is I owned a fitness center and I had a crush on a girl. It's, it's really simple. And she came with this uh, magazine and Dolph Lundgren was on top of the magazine. And oh, she wow. said, man, that's my dream, man. This guy, oh, my God, he's like six, seven and gorgeous. And I'm like, oh, shit, I never be like him. And the girl was so infatuated. I knew I had no shot at her, right? Uh, but it bothered me so much. And then Rocky IV came out. I walked to the movies and I watched and I thought, oh, man, this guy's like a god. Okay, I'm going to have to go to L.A. I'm going to have to challenge him, <laughs> kind of, you know. I'm going to, like a gunslinger, I, I, I want to see if he can do it. I'm not as good looking, not as tall. I'm going to do it. So I went there, and as most people that go there, you go to Gold's Gym in Venice, right? Yeah. Because they're all Schwarzenegger, Stallone. I mean, to that day, everybody works out there, right? Mm -hmm. So I knew I had to go there. I got a job picking up weights like anybody else, John Senna, we all did the same. We picked up weights, re-racked them. And the manager said, well, if you uh, want to be in the movies that they're shooting He-Man, Master of the Universe, okay. you should just go. Uh, Dolph is having dinner tonight in this restaurant. It's a VIP place. You know, I'll put you on the list. I'll make sure you, you just go to Dolph and say, oh, Dolph, you know, I want to be an actor like you. And just go. This is Hollywood. You can do it. So I go there and I was so nervous. I didn't know what to wear. You know, I was putting boots on, dressed all in leather, short sleeve. You know, I thought <laughs> I got to stick out. Yeah, sure. And I was waiting at the entrance and there were so many people. It's just a VIP place. Not anyone can get in there. And suddenly this limo drives up and Dolph gets out, bodyguard, cigar. Man, he was so good looking, just like in the movies, right? Yeah larger than life and my heart was beating i was so nervous i thought oh my god there's my chance i can be in the movies uh, naive actually you know? <laughs> just got off the boat what do i know right mm -hmm. so i block his way um and i said hey dolph i'm matthias i'm from germany i heard you doing master of the universe uh maybe i can be in your movie you know and he <laughs> he looked at me from bottom to top top to bottom and uh said well oh, uh maybe you can be my standing and then he said but if someone oh wait he said uh maybe you know this guy ralph miller he should be my standing if so at all he could okay. be my standing right okay. so uh, he pushed me aside more or less and my i was devastated you know i thought oh, this is so harsh what did i do wrong you know later of course i realized that's not how it goes <laughs> and <laughs> But, you know, that's how these things are. And then you just don't give up. You know, you don't have a car or anything. You, I heard about the audition, you know, and the audition was somewhere in the city. So I get myself there and there is a parking lot full of people, all six, five, black, white, uh, any nationality, right? With 
better looking than me, taller than me, muscles everywhere. And I'm like, oh my God, Hollywood is just insane. How am I ever going to make it? You know, but I waited in line <laughs> like anybody else finally get there, but I never got the job. Uh, another bodybuilder got the job, an African-American friend of mine, not friend, acquaintance later, you know, he was also a bodybuilder at Goldstrom, but he had a mask on. He played the Skeletor. Mm, okay. Yeah. So if I would have gotten it, I would have only had a mask on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. 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 Wow. Uh, that that was the beginning. And uh, I just didn't know, you know, you do everything. I've done so many things. Then I went to wrestling school because it wasn't about martial arts for me uh, because I'm not Van Damme, right? I knew that. I'm very yeah. realistic. I'm just capable of doing action. I want to be an action guy. Okay. So I went to wrestling school. And that was very physical and I liked it, but it wasn't for me because intellectually I didn't feel like a wrestler at that mm -hmm. time. You know, I'm from Germany, I'm a bit more reserved, I'm shy, I'm not, I know. Blah, 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 blah. So it wasn't me. And I thought, ah, oh, okay, that's not me. And suddenly, believe it or not, I, I couldn't believe it. I get a phone call from the manager of Gold's Gym, Derek Barton, mm -hmm. who used to be a stuntman. And, uh, he took a liking to me and he said, you're not going to believe it. I just got a phone call from a producer out of Hong Kong. They need to replace this guy Van Damme. I didn't know who Van Damme was, to be honest, sure. back then, right? Uh, it's a Belgian martial art fighter and he just walked off the set more or less, you know, that's mm -hmm. their story, the version of their story. Uh, your chance, go up there, audition. And, um, I did. I drove up there and I thought the only way in Hollywood to make it if I stick out, because I realized there's, I'm a diamond dozen, you know, I mean, there's so many good looking martial artists and fighters and us, uh, it's just too many people at that point, bigger, better deal that was in the eighties and nineties. Right. And, um, so I put on leather pants for my father, Bavarian leather pants, cowboy boots, a muscle shirt, totally hideous, to be honest. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it looked kind of weird, but this used to be also my acting shot, okay. uh, like my eight by 10. I was the first in Hollywood to use something with an upper body free in my leather pants. And that got me a lot of work later because people always use the face. And I thought my face is not good enough. I'm just going to use my body. I'm going to use muscles. And I hung up that picture at Gold's gym next to Arnold, Lou Ferrigno, all the other people. And it was always stolen. And I thought, oh, that's a good sign, you know? Long story short, I get there and the producer, the, the female, Maria Cellino, who wrote the script, the moment I walked out of the car, she had written another script, uh, a sci-fi movie with a guy with long blonde hair. And she said, that's the guy, that's the guy, even though it wasn't even the guy for the movie, but she fell for me and she said, that guy's gonna be, a star one day, whatever. So, and the producer, Roy Horan, one of the producers, he looked at Maria and he said, no way, <laughs> that's not Van Damme, you know, <laughs> that, that, that can't be, he, he doesn't, he's too big and whatnot. So he took me in the backyard in the garden and he said, let's fight, you know, let's throw kicks and stuff. So I, I know basic Taekwondo, Judo, all that, and he wasn't happy. You know, uh, if you didn't do the splits, if you weren't Van Damme, you weren't Van Damme. I mean, sure. I must admit that yeah. that's a far cry off Van Damme, a uh, German. Yeah, he set the bar really high, so. <laughs> oh, uh, forget it. Never going to get there. Don't want to get there because that's not me, right? Yeah, so, sure. and that's why I love Van Damme because I'm a fan mm. from a, from my side point of view. I don't want to be like him because I can't. Nobody can. It's Van Damme. Yeah. Um, and there's Michelle Kissy, there's all these people, everybody's different. So long story short, uh, the producer said, the female producer, if you don't take him, I'm not going to do the movie. <laughs> and oh, then, uh, okay. so she was a big fan of yours <laughs> right from the get go. Yeah, she, she ended up being my godmother and, uh, she just look, she discovered, um, uh, John Travolta. So wow. I kind of had a hunch that I should hang with her afterwards you know okay. don travolta was at her house bruce lee was there all the time believe it or not she was that well connected right wow. she knew bruce lee I'm, I'm not lying to you this she she had a restaurant bruce came everybody was always hanging out there because she was like an italian mama so mm, okay uh 
and she was adopting uh, young actors, so to speak, and I was one of them. So was John Travolta and Bruce Lee was a regular, but not managed by her or anything, you know. Mm. So um, long story short, I fly to Hong Kong, uh, Bangkok, sorry, and I met Lauren Avedon uh, on the plane. I had no idea who he is. He said, well, I don't know. This happened so quick. Kurt McKinney uh, is not doing it. I shot this uh, uh, commercial for Slice or Seven Up. They saw it. I got booked. Here I am. We're making a movie. <laughs> wow. It was amazing. Nice. I didn't even speak English. <laughs> um, I had no clue what's going to happen. If it wouldn't be for Maria who put her head out for me, you know, on a sling, I would have been never cast ever, ever. Not a chance. So I get there and I have this all this dialogue and I'm like oh my god I don't even know how to act I don't know anything I'm not even anyway I'm here and there was one actor Max Steyer so I kind of like befriended him and you know oh, show me how to act blah 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 and then I'm in Bangkok and I get a phone call <laughs> this is hilarious I tell you uh yeah uh, come on down we want to do something and I'm like oh so I go down and I see there's a camera set up and another camera and there's like a thousand people watching because it's Bangkok, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and the director, Ko Yang, he said, now show me what you got. And I'm like, OK, wh what do you mean? Show me, show you what I got. <laughs> well, you know, do the splits, do this, do that. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you the guy flipped out. A while. He flipped yeah. out. He flipped out. He started yelling so loud in uh, Chinese. Mm -hmm. Thank God I didn't know what he was talking about and uh, walked off. I mean, <laughs> I'm fired. That's it, you know. So they left me behind and um, started filming without me. And I had to uh, go in a training camp in Bangkok. I trained my ass off in movie fighting with the Hong Kong people, right? Yeah. With the stunt guys. And I, I really realized I have a thing for it. You know, I like it. I like to get punished. I like to fall. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I just don't, I have no fear at that time. I was 26, right? Uh, pain means nothing. And in Hong Kong, if pain means nothing, you have a shot, right? Mm -hmm. you, you have to do this for real. So eventually they're calling me into the jungle and shit hit the fan right away. I mean, they hated me so much because I couldn't deliver my dialogue. All I had to do is in my chair, turn around and say something, but I couldn't even turn my chair around the right <laughs> way. Missed my mark. The director runs off yelling, would have been, you know, whatever he said, it wasn't nice. The DP comes to me literally in the same moment and says, listen, uh, if I can give you an advice once this movie is over, your nose, your nose is so big, you should have a plastic surgery on your nose if you want to make it the business. And I'm like, Oh my God, this can't get any worse, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you say, hey, learn how to speak English and read the dialogue instead of fix your nose. <laughs> yeah, and become Van Damme while you edit. Yeah, become yeah. Van you Damme. Do the splits oh. too while you're at it. <laughs> yeah, and they cut my hair short and slicked it back so I look a little bit like him, and which never happened. I never looked like him. Long story short, they set up the first fight with their best fighter. He's the biggest and tallest from the Hong Kong people, and we went for it. And I hurt him really bad, unfortunately, you know, okay. we hurt each other, but I, um, he got a bit hurt. It wasn't so much my fault, but I realized this is what Hong Kong is all about. And it clicked in me. And I said to myself, no, no, don't have to work. I said to myself, you must be willing to get hurt. And I changed my mind. And I said, I'll do anything you want, huh? any stunt, anything. I don't care. I'll do it. Drag me punch me, whatever, I don't care. I'll do it. And I loved it so much. I became like uh, that guy. I was looking for the next beatdown, right? And it wasn't enough for me, actually. I wanted to do more. And Lauren Avedon is such an amazing Taekwondo fighter, right? Yeah. That it was so easy to work with Lauren. I mean, he was just, well, you know, Lauren, you know what he can do. It's, it's kind of what you do. That does, Lauren does that. And it's very easy if you're big to fight someone like that. That's very professional. Never hurt each other. It was fantastic. And then Cynthia Rothrock, immediately my favorite person, because uh, A, she was tougher than anybody. I mean, 
she was full contact all the time at night she couldn't even hold her toothbrush she would never say no to anything ever wow. she's the most adventurous amazing woman i've ever met right i looked up to her and we were both like newcomers in an american movie even though it was a chinese movie it was a big budget and it would go theatrical yeah. and we knew that we knew this is our chance you know and uh we we formed a really great friendship because uh, i mean i i looked up to lauren i looked up to cynthia because they really crafted martial artists you know mm -hmm. And that's where the journey started um, of me having to adapt to these great fighters. He, he, see, like I said, I was not um, a martial artist. I was wanted to come into this business as an actor without being an actor. <laughs> it's actually kind of crazy, <laughs> right? No speak English, no nothing, wants to be actor. But um, I had the feeling I could do it. So I went to acting class, all that crap. I was the worst actor horrible anyway um Ritka Howe was kind of my idol acting wise you know so i wrote to his agent he answered i couldn't believe it i see him you know mm -hmm. and he said maybe one day not now you not you know not there yet blah 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 i heard that a lot you're not there yet uh over the years you work your way up to it you know like Van Damme starts in a costume, right? My first job was hand doubling Ken Wall for taking Beverly Hills. And I was so proud that I'm in the movies. I took it really seriously. I mean, I was in an actual helicopter on stage, inserting the magazine for machine gun attack. But it was only my hands and I already thought I'm in Hollywood. You know, that's how delusional you are, but that's how it starts. Yeah, sure. And then I'm a bodybuilder on the beach with Tom Hanks and Dan Aykroyd and uh, with all the other big bodybuilders. And I thought, oh, now I'm in the movie scene. You see me, you know, that's how you start. It's really bizarre, you know. Um, but you have to have that uh, beginning in order to make it to the end so that you actually are become an actor or uh, at least an action star, martial arts star in the 80s, 90s, every single day a guy walked into Goldstream who was as good as Van Damme. I mean, I'm not saying as good, at least, but they all could do splits mm -hmm. and they could fight and they had a title. And they were French or they were Belgians or they were from Holland or Switzerland and somewhere so good looking. And I know them all uh, because we're all friends. I'm talking about Olivier Grenier. Uh, that's the ones that made it, Daniel Bernhardt. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's yeah, the ones that made yeah. it right yeah and then a countless countless others that never made it and uh we were very competitive we were all friends but we were competing against each other and i wasn't a martial artist like them but we were still competing with mm -hmm. you know because yeah. we kind of i slipped into the martial art movies as a bad guy so there i was couldn't get rid of me and uh i kind of learned it and i loved it and i love it so much that you know I'm really into it now. I will never be like you or uh, Scott Atkins, but uh, I'm devoted to martial arts as well, right? Uh, because when you do movies, you learn from the best in a short period of time. Yeah, yeah. you go to camps, like I uh, did a movie Fist Fighter, and I went to a fighting camp with the guy that did Raging Bull and the Rocky, the first Rocky movie, oh, wow. right? Yeah, and he, he was, the, these people are very tough you know like you really learn how to fight and box and they he split my lip the first day mm. um and uh, every single day you split it again you know till you learn to keep up your hands till i was ready and then he, he was calling me girly man i mean yeah <laughs> yeah yeah he had it out i mean just that alone is a movie how you get trained to be in the movies to mm -hmm. where they toughen you up uh Benny Akita they all do it. They all hurt you a little bit. And this guy was the worst. He he hurt me in my heart. And at the end, I just went for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in front of everybody. I just went for the guy. And um, there was this nasty skirmish. And uh, I kind of, because I know you judo and stuff. Oh, I don't know if he let me win or what, but he kind of was on the floor faster than I thought. And um, but that was kind of the graduation. I guess he wanted to get me 
to become aggressive, to actually go for a real fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. So, and, and you did. Yeah. It's, so, <laughs> interesting it's fantastic. So there's a there's a meaning to it. Or oh, Benny Arquitas, uh, oh, he he didn't like me. Uh, I could tell. And when you know the contact hits, we have to take them for the camera. You know, they were always a bit harder than for the others. I felt, but I loved it. I thought, punish me. I want to be like you guys. You know, give mm -hmm. me something. You know, yeah. uh, Sasha Mitchell was not a martial artist, but he became one. You know oh, what I mean? No, he actually became one because of that that's interesting yes. I, I thought yes. maybe he's got a kickboxing background but it's like he just learned it um Man, as he got the role. He learned interesting because uh we were both the weak link and we hated it so much to be the outcast people and and we took it both seriously mm -hmm. i mean he, he took it really seriously because he went on to do more of oh, yeah, the sure. league, you know yeah. yeah so my had my talk to him i love it He's amazing. So, um, if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Um, Hi, this is Matthias Hus, your favorite dark angel. Shout out to you, David Kurtzel, the Viking Samurai. You're going to kick some ass March 9th in Atlantic City. I want everybody to be there or be square when David is crushing his opponent. Yeah.